and welcome to this week's DuckSoup webinar, how to combine automated and manual outreach in LinkedIn. So to introduce today's webinar team, we have Giles Garnett, Head of Professional Services, who's going to present today's webinar and answer all your questions at the end of the webinar. And on live chat today, we have me, Jen, the Head of Customer Support. So let's jump in. Over to you, Giles. Thank you, Jim. Hopefully uh, you can all hear me loud and clear. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. Um, and welcome to today's uh, webinar on Duck Soup. Um, we will jump straight, straight in. And today we're looking at combining automated and manual outreach in LinkedIn. Now for the most effective LinkedIn lead generation process, it's necessary to combine both automatic activities, that's uh, mainly the outreach process, and manual activities. Uh, so that's responding and interacting with prospects when necessary. By effectively combining the two, you can allow the automatic actions to be handled by a combination of tools, thereby freeing up your valuable time uh, to add value where it is uh, required and needed. So here at DuckSoup, we, uh, we understand that juggling the two activities can, can cause a bit of a headache. Uh, so being able, to use a f uh, being able to use flexible tools is of paramount importance. Um, having the ability uh, to enable and disable or pause automation and uh, to be able to clearly define when you want certain activities to occur. And the functionality of uh, DuckSoup allows us to do that. So manual actions in LinkedIn uh, can always be lead generation related, of course, uh, but there are also uh, instances uh, when they may not be. Um, for example, uh, you may be uh, looking at LinkedIn, LinkedIn from a, a social perspective, looking at friends or ex-colleagues or former boss, uh, that sort of thing, uh, just uh, curiously browsing uh, uh, LinkedIn uh, for, your, uh, for your pleasure. Um, and in, in this webinar, uh, it is to complement the, the blog post that was uh, posted yesterday on the subject, we're going to look at how best to avoid those manual LinkedIn activities from interfering with the automated activities and demonstrate how you can optimize uh, and understand your usage of duck soup to combine them uh, as best as possible. So if we look at um, the LinkedIn lead generation process. So from a from a high level, um, these process steps here that are, we've outlined, the discover, the connect, the engage, and the handover to sales, these are common between both manual and automated lead generation process. And this can, this uh, illustration here, uh, can illustrate, help to illustrate how the two worlds of automation and manual activities uh, overlap and interact. Now, Duck, Duck Soup is focused very much on the connect and uh, engage phases of the process. Uh, by developing uh, such integrations as we have with uh, Lead Fuse, for example, uh, Duck Soup can also assist with the discover, discovering your new uh, potential leads phase as well. Uh, progressing leads through to the, uh, the sales uh, is still a manual activity, uh, and that's where you would be adding the value and, and interacting with your potential leads uh, in a direct way. There's work ongoing in that area as well. So if we now look at this model in a little bit more detail uh, to, uh, to put a bit more flesh on the bones. First of all, we'll look at the, the, the discover phase. Now, what you need to remember is we have this model and uh, the discover phase you have a huge pool of potential customers out there using LinkedIn. LinkedIn has a total user base of around 575 million uh, people, of which somewhere over 104 million uh, users are uh, active on a daily basis. So that's a huge pool of potential customers that are out there, potential new leads for you. When you're searching within LinkedIn, don't let these numbers put you off. Uh, remember that the more first degree connections that you have, uh, the bigger your second and third degree network will be. So that's your potential uh, leads that you can find. 
really important that you put a good focus um, on uh, your targeting and searching uh, activities to focus uh, clearly on the personas that you're aiming for. So these are huge numbers, huge uh, pool of potential leads, um, and make sure that when you're carrying out that, uh, that searching activity uh, to pin down those potential leads that you're using LinkedIn to its best, uh, to its best capability there by uh, either, either searching effectively within standard LinkedIn or using the additional filters that are available within Sales Navigator. If we now move into uh, the connect phase, so you're discovering your new, your, your potential new leads, and now you're trying to connect with your new leads, so we're handing over to the next phase. This is where DuckSoup really uh, comes into its own, and you can connect with prospects manually, uh, just through uh, clicking on profiles and, and connecting with them, or you can use the automated DuckSoup options to connect. So if I click into uh, my LinkedIn profile uh, and we have a look at the duck soup options click on the options we open the tab here and what we can do is with the automated actions here we can decide to send connection requests to second and third degree connections using standard LinkedIn or sales navigator and remember you will greatly increase your chances of um, a successful connection with a, with a new potential lead if you include a personalized message with the connection request. Using the appropriate uh, labels or the tags here, you can make that, that connection message uh, appear to be personalized and customized to your potential new lead. If you want to be able to see who you have invited, um, either automatically or manually, you can do this, flip back to slide when duck soup carries out uh, uh, an auto invite it will create uh, will uh, the system will by default add this uh, default invite invited tag and if you want to then go back through your uh, LinkedIn network to see who you have invited using duck soup we can go back to uh, the duck soup uh, activities here we can click on the duck and we can carry out a search by tag. We can then have a look and see who we have invited using duck soup. And therefore we can then clearly see who's received an automatic invitation through, uh, through duck soup. Um, this is a system tag applied by duck soup. It does not get added to manually uh, sent connections. Um, so that's a way to differentiate who you are inviting uh, via which way. So once we've carried out our uh, connection activities, we then move to the engagement phase. And with DuckSoup, you can engage with prospects in a number of different ways. Um, so for example, you can simply visit their profile. So again, we'll go back to uh, here, you would carry out your search and then you would uh, choose to visit profiles here from a search result within LinkedIn. Uh, you can just carry out a search and, uh, and not do anything further. Um, similarly, you can also then carry, uh, carry other, out other automated actions using duck soup. So you can endorse skills and you can send degree uh, first degree messages to your existing network so if again I flick back to duck soup we look at the options and you're probably quite familiar with here the opportunity you have to send a personalized message to your first degree connections when you're carrying out visits and also the possibility to endorse the skills of first degree connections you can uh, choose to, to, uh, to endorse one or three. And that can trigger an engagement. That's when, when, you're, when your potential new leads are within the engagement phase and you're carrying that out. Further to that, um, if you are a Turbo user, uh, you can also use the automated follow-up messaging functionality. Um, and uh, in Turbo, once you have the message bridge enabled, so, 
again I'm going to flick around a little bit here so apologies um, so under the connect tab here if you have the message bridge here enabled and you're using the automated follow-up message section here where you can uh, send a number of automated follow-up messages with uh, various time delays um, so Duxit will periodically check for new connections, add the default accepted tag and indicate that the new connection has then moved to the engage phase of the lead generation process. When, as and when your new connection responds to the message, Duxit will add a default responded tag indicating that the prospect has moved to the handover phase and is ready to be handed to, uh, to the sales, into the sales process for the manual follow-up. So again, if we look back, so here you can see that, that that's the tag that would be applied, the default accepted, and then there would be a further default responded as and when the message bridge picked up that they had sent you uh, a reply to one of your messages, be that your initial connection request or one of your scheduled uh, follow-up, uh, automated follow-up messages. So now we come to sort of uh, a little bit more of the nitty gritty when it comes to being able to separate um, the manual and automated activities. And what we have here is some best practices and, and some, advice, uh, some advice for you to, to how to manage and separate those activities and have it clear in your mind uh, the best way to behave. So, so we'll start off with the, uh, the planner. Now, uh, this allows you to predetermine uh, when you're happy for DuckSoup to carry out automated actions and when you're not. Uh, and this can help you avoid parallel activities on a LinkedIn account. Um, you're probably quite familiar with the planner. Uh, this is what it looks like. And it can be found, um, go back into uh, the DuckSoup options again. So once again, you would just click on the duck you would go to your options and then along the top we have the planner tab um, so we can avoid carrying out parallel activities manual and automatic here if you have uh, parallel activities happening automated and manual that can cause performance issues and it also uh, it can uh, potentially uh, trigger some sort of LinkedIn uh, alerts that there is automation that can happening on your account. So the best practice here is to make sure you're clear in your mind and you have a good plan as to when you want manual and automatic actions to take place. To update the planner, you just click on the squares um, and the green times are when you're happy for automation to take place. The gray squares are when you want the, the duck to not carry out any automated actions on your behalf seen all sorts of variations of this from people running 24 7 with automation to being very clear and they want uh, automation to run at very set times especially if they're uh, very active on linkedin manually they may want to you may want to configure the the, the robot to run between certain hours for example 8 a.m and 10 a.m and then have uh, a period across lunchtime when you would want to carry out your manual activities and then uh, again, allow automation to happen later in the day. This is a very powerful uh, tool. I was uh, speaking with somebody the other day and we were trying to carry out some activities with his uh, his account on a booster call. And then I realized uh, that nothing was happening because he was in Australia and it was 11 o'clock at night. And of course the uh, the planner meant that there was no no activities allowed on his account. So uh, we, uh, we soon worked that one out and uh, were able to move on. This is very powerful. And it's set to the time zone in which your computer is based. So be aware of that. If you're in one part of the world and targeting people in another part of the world, you need to consider the difference in time zones there as well. So that's the planner. Um, if we now move on to um, blacklisting. So you can, uh, using the blacklisting uh, tag, uh, you can avoid revisiting profiles twice by using the blacklisted tag. Uh, and that can, will take a profile out of any automated activities if you're engaging with them manually. Um, so there is a, a tab, uh, which I'll show you in a second where that is, where you can turn that on when you're carrying out. Uh, when you're carrying out, you can put the blacklisted tag on. I'll show you how to do that in a second. 
and then you can have that enabled as well. So again, we go back into the uh, duck soup options. We look at actions here. And here we have the option to turn this on and off. Now to um, manually add a tag, you would go to um, a profile. Wait for a moment for this to load. to my connections and if you wanted to make sure that none of the uh, none of the people that you were uh, one of the people you didn't want to have any automated actions you would click on the profile just wait for that to load so there we are those are our, our, our tags there and then you could manually add uh, uh, the blacklisted tag there. And that would then remove that, um, that uh, profile from any automated actions in the future. That can be a first degree connection or second or third degree if you wish to remove them from those uh, activities. So that's the blacklisting. Now, a really important area we're going to move on to next is um, handling of inboxes. And this is something I see come up regularly in both um, booster and uh, technical calls. Um, and this is uh, human curi curiosity uh, wanting to check your mailbox all the time. Um, so when you're manually checking and reading messages in LinkedIn, uh, so that's both standard and sales navigator. You need to make sure that you mark in conversations unread when you're finished. Reason for that is because the message bridge will only recognize unread emails. And if it doesn't do that, then it they can cause a break in the automation. And therefore, uh, if you have a series of follow up messages planned to be sent to somebody, there's a manual interaction. If the system doesn't see that manual interaction, it will continue to send the automated follow-ups. Um, it's also possible to, to stop automation by, by blacklisting. But if I illustrate this here um, a little further, um, if we look here under the automated actions, a new connection is connected with you and you have a series of automated follow-ups to uh, ready to go. Uh, somebody's connected with you. And after the first automated follow-up, they respond to you. You read that manually and you don't mark it as unread. They will then continue to get the subsequent messages because the system needs to see that unread message to put the appropriate tag on the profile to stop the further, further messages being sent. It's a very, very common thing that I see where people are saying, hang on a second, I've received a message, but it's still sending these auto follow-ups. And that's usually the case that the appropriate tag has not been applied when um, a message has been uh, read. OK, so that's the inbox. That's something to really take a, a very close eye on. Um, and in case you're not familiar with that, we'll take you back to LinkedIn. We'll look at messaging here. And to mark a message as unread, you would just need to click on the little envelope here. Uh, you can mark these messages as unread. And then the system, when the, the message bridge triggers, it will then um, identify those, uh, those people as having interacted with you, will pick that up, and will put the appropriate tag against those profiles. So now following up on manually added connections. So you will doubtless be wanting to carry out manual activities insofar as you will stumble across uh, contacts in LinkedIn that you do want to connect with manually. Um, and what we can do with DuckSoup, you can, uh, with DuckSoup Turbo, you can manu put manually added connections into your automated process by telling DuckSoup to auto engage with these profiles and you can uh, enable this again through the um, DuckSoup options. This is, uh, this is where it is here. And that then would automatically put the default invited tag. I'll just show you where you can find that. So again, we go back into DuckSoup options. 
and um, this box here surrounded by green here is this one here so send follow-up messages to all connections all new connections not just those using uh, invited using ducks in remember this automated follow-up messages is part of the turbo feature this isn't available to pro users what you can do here is you can make sure that you engage with all of your manually invited connections as well in the same way that you are with your with your automated uh, connections if you so desire another um, activity which is very important um, is recording so when you see um, the duck uh, the duck robot acting on your behalf um, within LinkedIn you see uh, the numbers uh, increasing in the corner of your screen. So up here, you get a clear view as to how many profile visits there have been, um, how many uh, profiles have been recorded, how many visits there are, and that populates your download data uh, uh, storage in, in, in there. So if you want to download it later for, for later analysis. But when you're performing manual outreach, you may not want DuckSoup to record your visits. So what we have the, is the ability to be able to turn the recorder on and off. And that's a very straightforward activity. You can just go up here and you can just turn it off just by pressing there. And what we should see, turn it off. We'll see that the duck gets greyed out and there's no recording going to happen there at all. If the recorder is on, data is going to be added to your download data and um, it will also generate visit events to webhooks so if you're using zapier uh, for interaction and integration with other uh, applications as well um, you will uh, you will have those uh, visit events being generated you can disable those by turning off the recorder here when you're carrying out manual uh, browsing or checking of profiles in linkedin Okay. Further, really important top tip for you for, 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 for Turbo users. There's one setting which uh, is available and it's there for, for, for various reasons, but it's to make sure you never enable this setting here. And this is the set robots and recorder to off on new tabs maybe a reason why you want to do this but if you're a turbo user and you're using automated follow-ups and you're wanting the message bridge to be active I'll just show you where that is a second then we go to uh, the options tab and then over here on the browser tab it's here so setting the robot and recorder to off on new tabs if you enable that then the message bridge will never be able to read any of the uh, the messages because every time the message bridge is uh, triggered every 10 minutes or however you've defined it, um, the, the the recorder will be off and therefore no messages will be uh, will be read and it will completely uh, hinder uh, and stop DuckSoup from execute, executing automated uh, lead generation and activity altogether, which of course is not uh, not the intention. Okay. So that sort of sums up, uh, that's, that's uh, where I wanted to uh, cover today with regards to the manual and automated uh, activities. So just a little recap and summary. Um, so DuckSoup and specifically DuckSoup Turbo provides a complete solution for, uh, for effective LinkedIn lead generation. It allows you to automate your outreach, out, outreach process and respond and interact manually, adding value where, where required. So with effective and uh, sensible use of the planner, uh, a good understanding of how to use and recognize the different system tags, and by following a clear process, you can safely and effectively harness the power of LinkedIn by using DuckSoup to facilitate your uh, lead generation activities. Um, that's all of the slides that I wanted to cover today. Um, hopefully, while I've been uh, chatting away uh, there have been some questions uh, on the on the chat uh, which I'm happy to address um, Jin have you been uh, looking at the chat and seeing if there's any questions there 
it was. And um, the first question would be from Martin. Uh, and he would like to know if you could explain the difference between LinkedIn inbox and Navigator inbox with the automated messages. Okay, um, so there are two distinct mailboxes within uh, within LinkedIn. Um, so in standard LinkedIn, you have a mailbox, but then also within um, Sales Navigator, you have a mailbox. Um, they are separate, and it's one of those things that uh, yeah, they're, they're, there's the separation there. If you're uh, if you're using Sales Navigator as well. Uh, but what, what can happen there, uh, Martin, is that uh, the, um, the message bridge will check all of those, uh, both of those different mailboxes for you. Um, the, um, let me have to think. Yeah, so, so when the message bridge is first enabled, it will check your standard mailbox. Second time, it will then go to your uh, sales navigator mailbox. And then the third time, it will then uh, look, at, look for new connections. So yeah, you you end up if you have a sales navigator mailbox, you need to to also check that separately um, and make sure that those messages aren't being uh, being read and then uh, left as unread. I'm trying to, I don't have any messages in my my sales navigator mailbox at the moment, so uh, not something I can show you right now. But if you look within sales navigator, you will find a separate message box there. Um, let's have a quick look. See if we can bear with me one second. So here you have, uh, as you can see here, you're both a sales navigator inbox and a LinkedIn inbox, and they are, to all intents and purposes, uh, separate. Um, and you can check those uh, accordingly uh, through the uh, through the uh, the tab at the at the top there. Okay. Next question. Um, regarding planning. Uh, for future updates, um, is it possible to add um, uh, time um, ourselves, like 7.15 instead of 7? Is this something we could work on later? Um, it's not something I can answer straight away. There is a, um, uh, on, the, on the DuckSuit website, there is a features request page and uh, maybe that would be uh, an interesting thing to uh, to put in there. Um, uh, any new feature requests can be placed there, and maybe we could uh, add a link to to where that is to the uh, information that goes out after the uh, after the uh, webinar. Um, and then you could, yeah, theoretically put customizable times on there. At the moment, for uh, simplicity and um, yeah, ease of visual uh, planning. This has been the most convenient way to do that, but uh, yeah, if, if there if there would be enough demand for it, I don't think there's any te technical reason why that couldn't be done, um, because it's purely putting a timestamp against an, an on and off activity, and uh, yeah, um, I think that's that's something that if we could include the uh, the new features uh, web link in the in the information, then that's something that could be looked at, and uh, if there's enough demand for it, then it could be added to a future future deployment potentially. Brilliant, thank you. Um, another question um, regarding uh, targeting. Um, do you have any tips on how to create uh, your targeting for automated messages? Um, I think one of the most important things uh, to consider when targeting is how you're finding your leads now, um, or your potential leads. Now, of course, in um, in Sales Navigator, um, you have uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, let's go there. you have the ability to search um, at a much more granular level um, using the, um, the the advanced search feature within Sales Navigator. And one of the most powerful things with Sales Navigator is that you can also uh, search within groups. Uh, now, you can do that within standard LinkedIn as well, but you have to be a member of those groups. Within Sales Navigator, you don't have to be a member of a group um, to be uh, able to uh, 
put search within it. So if we just do a search here, I'm not a member of uh, some of these groups here. So if we look at maybe uh, Growth Hacking Tactics New York, we can see that there's 696 uh, results in that particular in that particular uh, group. Um, now, what you can do now with this list is you could customize your um, connection message to these people based upon the fact that you found them within this group and you therefore have an interest in common. Uh, so you could then customize your message when you're sending your second and third degree, your, your connection, uh, connection message to this second and third degree uh, group. You can customize that according to your interest there and say, I have encountered your, I found your, uh, your profile whilst I was uh, engaging with people on whichever uh, discussion group it may be. And that can be a really useful way in of saying, look, we've got something in common. Uh, would you like to discuss the opportunities of uh, explore further opportunities in the future? And that can be a really powerful way of doing it. Having that extra uh, facility within Sales Navigator to, to search within groups can really uh, enable uh, a, a powerful uh, connection message to, uh, to hopefully hit home with your prospective leads. Hopefully that answers your question. Much another question um, regarding Turbo. Um, can a Turbo automated response, can they be set uh, to a different response uh, that goes out based on a tag uh, that I set? And that's uh, uh, from Dave. Sorry, can you repeat that? Please? Um, can automated responses be set to a different response that goes out based on a tag? Um, automated. So um, I think you're talking here about the, the automated follow-up messages. This is purely based upon the, uh, the, or the, uh, the standard system tags that are applied. And if we have a quick look here um, at the system tags that are applied, um, this is a standard rule within the, within the system. So uh, you have the default follow-up messages that are, are applied to each, uh, each profile as and when a message goes out. Um, and then you get the default responded. So it's, at the moment you can't uh, customize those tags. What you could do is um, you could carry out visits and uh, to various uh, subsets of your connections. Um, let's go back to the options. So if you had a group of, of people within your profile, within your network who you wanted to um, automatically tag with your own profile here, and then you may want to carry out a, um, uh, an additional um, action against those people. You could then uh, have applied a tag here to a, group, a subset of your first degree connections. You could then uh, have a look at that list of people by, by doing a search by tag. And then you could send um, a personalized first degree message to, those, to that subset of people uh, who you'd applied a, uh, a customized tag for. And I think that would be the only way to do it at the moment. And it wouldn't be an automated follow-up message on a delay. You would have to do that during um, uh, uh, an activity, a, a visit activity that you would ask the robot to do on your behalf. Okay, any further questions? Yes. That was the last question. I can't see any new uh, questions via live chat. So I think um, our webinar uh, just came to an end. Okay, well, uh, thank you, everybody. I hope you found this useful. There's also been a blog post um, uh, on the website, uh, which was uh, posted yesterday on this same topic. So it covers a lot of the, the, the ground that we've covered here. Um, you can take some time to look at that as well. Um, and yeah, uh, there's a further webinar in two weeks time covering a, a different topic and um, hopefully uh, you will uh, be able to join us for, for that webinar. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Jin, for your, your introduction and also your, uh, your work on the questions. Thank you very much.